Welcome back. All right, today's career video, it's a Hall of Famer, Denny Potvin. Uh, so yeah, haven't done a Denny Potvin video yet, but here it is. Uh, I've talked about a lot of members of that Islanders team that was a dynasty. I've thought about doing videos on Wayne Merrick was one I thought about, uh, Bob Nystrom being another. Uh, but here we are with Denny Potvin. So he was the number one pick in 1973, and there was a lot of hype about him coming into the draft. Uh, he had posted a ton of points in junior, got a lot of attention, and the Islanders, who were entering their second season in the National Hockey League, scooped him up first overall, and they never had any regrets about it. Podvin, that first year, plays 77 games, 17 goals, 37 assists, 54 points. Fantastic for a defenseman in his first year, and he wins the Calder Trophy and plays in the All-Star Game. So, really, you know, he is in heady territory there with an All-Star Game in his rookie season. Calder on the blue line, and then 74-75, uh, 79 games played, 21 goals, 55 assists, 76 points, and then he makes his playoff debut. And the Islanders were geared up right away to to contend. So this is only their third season. So again, we talk about when does it, when should a team be good? Well, the Islanders it took till year three, and they had seven. He Potman played 17 games in the playoffs, five goals, nine assists, 14 points. He's a first team All Star. Second in Norris voting behind some guy named Orr. Seventh in Hart voting, and he plays in the All-Star game again. So he's top 10 in the Hart voting, too. So, not bad. 75-76, he plays 78 games, 31 goals, uh, which would be a career high for him on the blue line. Fantastic goal totals. 67 assists, which was sixth overall. 98 points. So... Uh, very close to 100 points there. In the playoffs, he adds five goals, 14 assists for 19 points in 13 games. Denny Podvin was very good in the playoffs. He's a first-team All-Star, and he wins the Norris Trophy. He's second in heart voting, and he plays in the All-Star game. He was the first player, not named Bobby Orr, to win a Norris Trophy since 1967. So, yeah, uh, that's that's fantastic territory right there to be in as well, isn't it? So 76-77, what does he do for an encore? He plays all 80 games, uh, 25 goals, 55 assists, which is 10th overall in the NHL that year, 80 points. In the playoffs, he had 6 goals, 4 assists for 10 points in 12 games. 6 goals in 12 games, not bad again, from the blue line. Uh, he's a second team All-Star, he's 3rd in Norris voting, ninth in Hart voting, and again, plays in the All-Star game. So it is a remarkable career four years in, and you could already make the argument that uh, he's looking like he could become one of the best defensemen of all time. But again, overshadowed by Orr? Absolutely. And we'll discuss that again. Uh, so 77-78, 80 games played, 30 goals, 64 assists, which is fifth overall, uh, 94 points, also fifth overall in the NHL that year. In the playoffs, seven games, two goals, two assists, four points, first team all-star, Norris winner again, uh, seventh in heart voting, and he plays in the All-Star game. So again, Potvin just continues to put up ridiculous numbers. 78-79, uh, he had a career year. 73 games, 31 goals, so he ties his career high from a few years earlier. 70 assists, which is fifth overall. 101 points, which is seventh overall in the NHL. So absolutely just awesome numbers. Just Potvin, one of the best. In the playoffs, he had four goals, seven assists for 11 points in 10 games. Uh, first team All-Star? Yep. Norris Trophy? Yes. And that would be his final Norris Trophy. Uh, and he's fourth in heart voting. So top 10 in heart voting multiple years. I don't know with a defenseman that we see that very often, but again, he was kind of overshadowed by this guy named Orr throughout parts of, uh, of that run. 79-80, he only plays 31 games that year because of a broken thumb. Eight goals, 33 assists, 41 points. In the playoffs, well... After getting Butch Goring and with the team that the Islanders have put together, they were going to go on some runs here. They win their first Stanley Cup of what would be four in a row. Uh, in, in that run, Potvin plays 21 games, six goals, 13 assists, 19 points. He was ninth in Hart voting that year as well. So he doesn't end up top 10 in Norris voting, but he does end up top 10 in Hart because, sure, why not? 80-81. And think about it, too. He's ninth in Hart voting, even though he only played 31 games. So... Because I've seen people talking about, well, if you haven't played this number of games, you shouldn't be eligible for an award. Y yeah, 80-81. He plays 74 games that year, 20 goals, 56 assists, 76 points. In the playoffs, 18 games played, 8 goals, 17 assists, 25 points. As they reach their second final, 
and win their second final in a row. Uh, he is a first-team All-Star that year, second in Norris voting, ninth in Hart voting, and plays in the All-Star game. So absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous career for, for Potvin. 81-82, he only plays 60 games that year, 24 goals, 37 assists, 61 points, so still around a point per game. In the playoffs, he adds 5 goals, 16 assists for 21 points in 19 games. Again, just crazy. And that's the uh, third straight Stanley Cup for them. He is eighth in Norris voting that year. So again, top 10 in Norris voting. He only played 60 games. What's happening? 82-83, played 69 games that year. 12 goals, 54 assists, 66 points. In the playoffs, he adds eight goals, 12 assists for 20 points in 20 games. Uh, Stanley Cup, yep, that's the fourth and final Stanley Cup in a row. And he plays in the All-Star game. So we're going into 83-84, and he's... Missed some games with injury previous seasons. They've had four straight Stanley Cup runs. But if he was tired during the 83-84 season, it didn't show in his numbers. 78 games played, 22 goals, 63 assists, 85 points. Now, the 84 playoffs saw the Islanders get all the way to the Stanley Cup final. They did not have any gas left in the tank. Uh, and the Oilers did. The Oilers, who had been embarrassed in 83 in that final... Uh, wanted to return the favor in 84 and kind of sort of did. And in that run, he plays 20 games in the playoffs, one goal, five assists, six points. No Stanley Cup. Uh, second team All-Star, though, fourth in Norris voting, and again, plays in the All-Star game. So for Potvin, what does he do for, for an encore from that? Well, 84-85, his numbers drop off a bit. 77 games, 17 goals, 51 assists, 68 points. He adds three goals, two assists for five points in 10 playoff games as the Islanders are done reaching the Stanley Cup final. 85-86, he plays 74 games, 21 goals, 38 assists, 59 points. So another 20-goal season from the blue line. Uh, three games in the playoffs, just the one assist. 86-87, 58 games during the regular season, so he misses 22 games that year. 12 goals, 30 assists, 42 points. And in the playoffs, two goals, two assists for four points in 10 games. 87-88 turns out to be his final season. Uh, 72 games played that year, 19 goals, 32 assists, 51 points. In the playoffs, he adds a goal and four assists for five points in five games. He was 10th in Norris voting that year, and he played in the All-Star game. This would be his final year. He retired young because he didn't want to be hanging around too long. Uh, he didn't want to be one of these guys who's, you know, in his early 40s and teams just aren't signing him anymore. So he ends up playing a grand total of 1,060 games in his career, 310 goals. And when he retired, he was the number one goal scorer on the blue line all time. 742 assists, which was 40, which is 49th overall, and 1,052 points, which is 76th overall on the all-time list. In the playoffs, 185 games played, so that's more than two seasons added on with playoffs. 56 goals, 108 assists, 164 points. He was, of course, named to the 100 greatest players in NHL history when they had that uh, 100 players at the NHL's 100-year mark. Uh, and again, first to win the Norris Trophy, not named nor, not named or since 67. And then in 76, he, he ruffled some feathers a bit. So Bobby Orr had quite the tournament in the 1976 Canada Cup, despite the fact that he was on one leg. Uh, Potvin wrote after he felt that he should have been the MVP for that tournament. And and this is where we talk about ego in sports. I don't think ego is a bad thing. I think you should envision yourself as being the best. I think you should uh, strive for more and shouldn't accept just being second fiddle to anybody else. Now, when Potvin retired, he did say that Bobby Orr was the equivalent of the Beatles and the other defense were just any other band that was trying to play when the Beatles, meaning the he was the absolute greatest and everybody else was just trying to get some attention during that era. Bobby Orr also talked up Denny Potvin in his retirement and was very nice about him as well. Uh, now, for Potvin, he did become the team captain for the Islanders during the summer of 79. Uh, going into the 79-80 season, everything that the Islanders set up worked. Uh, whether it's the Goring trade, whether it's making Potvin captain, any of the drafting they were doing during the late 70s to set everything up, it set up the greatest dynasty I've watched in my time watching hockey. Uh, the the Islanders, 80 through 83, they were just virtually unstoppable. And while the Oilers did win five cups in seven years, and that was a fantastic performance, 
there was always something, there was always this feeling of danger with the Oilers, and it might have been the fact that the defense wasn't always the greatest. And there was always this feeling that maybe they could get knocked off the Islanders between 80 and 83. I never really had any doubt about the Islanders in any given season uh, from 81 through 83. Again, 79, 80, I, I watched a little bit of hockey here and there, but I was very young and didn't pay nearly as much attention as I would in the years following. Uh, he was the first defenseman in NHL history to reach 1,000 points. Of course, he's been joined by a bunch of other defensemen, but when he retired, he was the number one point-producing defenseman of all time. Uh, the Islanders retired his number March 31st of 1988, so once they knew he was retiring, uh, his number got retired. Nobody would wear the number five again anyways, even if they hadn't retired it. Uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame inducted him in 1991, so as soon as he was eligible. Uh, he did win bronze at the World Championship in 1986, and that was on top of winning the Canada Cup in 1976. Uh, and then, then we get into, and I had to mention it here, because anytime I talk about Potvin, there's going to be Ranger fans, um, and the fact that Ranger fans would chant that Potvin sucks. Um, and that dates back to an injury that was suffered by Ulf, Se Ulf Nilsson. I almost said Ulf Samuelson. Ulf Nilsson uh, in 1979. Potvin kind of... I want. I don't want to say took a run at him. I know Ranger fans would see it that way, but the way Ulf Nilsson put it was that the Madison Square Garden ice wasn't great because there were always events coming in and there was basketball, and he his foot got kind of cut caught in a rut in the ice, and while his foot was caught, uh, Potvin just slammed him, and so yeah, uh, he was in a vulnerable position. And, and Potvin put him out for months. So Ranger fans decided that Potvin was public enemy number one, which continued right up until his retirement. Uh, he was not popular with Ranger fans. But, I mean, hey, you know, that's the way that works. That's the way it is in hockey. One thing that I, I've, I've been noticing in playoffs, especially, you know, now that I've got the channel and everything, is that in any given series you'll see fans complaining about one player. This player's dirty, this player's dirty, and then that, that dirty player moves on to the next round. And that next fan base that's against that dirty player probably doesn't mention it at all, and there's no incident. So uh, for Potvin, I didn't see anything else in his career file that would be at all along the lines of dirty plays. He did have more than a penalty minute per game. He retired with about 1,300 penalty minutes. Uh, he could drop the gloves if he needed to, uh, but that was kind of standard. Uh, with the Islanders. Uh, the Islanders could beat you any way that you saw fit. Uh, they could score, they could play defense, they had great goaltending, and if you wanted to drop the gloves, the Islanders were more than happy to oblige. Potvin didn't shy away from that either. So really solid all-around defenseman, arguably one of the best all-around defensemen in the history of the National Hockey League. Uh, physical, everything you would want, Potvin had it. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.